So Full Swing has been around um, over 30 years, and we, we have probably by far more simulators out on the open market than any other um, company. Uh, the reason that we've kind of established ourselves as one of the top tier simulator solutions in the world is, is the quality of our tracking system. So one thing that we do fundamentally different than uh, other companies is the way we track the golf ball. If you're familiar with other types of tracking technologies, you have some camera solutions that will look at impact, see what the golfer does, and then calculate what happens in the virtual world. Uh, that's similar with radar, there's sonar technology out there and some others, but effectively what they're doing is seeing impact and then we'll calculate uh, the resulted shot from there. The one thing that you see with the, the calculated uh, ball flight is there's going to be a short but noticeable lag from the time the ball hits the screen until the time anything transitions into the virtual world. So what's different with way what Full Swing does is we have these two 360 degree curtains of technology. So those curtains of technology are going to measure the ball speed, line, and trajectory to 100% accuracy, uh, which effectively not only gives you the, the repeatable data to rely on for game improvement or just flat accuracy, um, but what it allows us to do is transition the golf ball into the virtual world exactly where and when it hits the screen. So to demonstrate that, um, this might take a second, but we're going to zoom into the screen a bit. And I'm going to toss this golf ball um, at the lower right-hand side. I think you guys might be inverted, so um, to see how you guys transition this. But I've got the ball, golf ball, and when I toss it through uh, the infrared sensors, you're going to see exactly where it hits the screen. Let's do that. We'll do it one more time just to make sure that it transitions through the, the video demo. Pause the screen again. And exactly where and when it hits the screen, you see that live transition into the virtual world. So the reason that's so important is for a couple of things. There, with that part of the tracking technology, there's no moving parts. It never needs to be calibrated. So you're going to get repeatable data, the speed, but the most important is the golfer is going to maintain the, the connection with the feel of the golf shot. So there's no internal conversation during the lag of, is that what I did or does that feel correct? So for this portion, I'm going to hit a couple shots and I'm just going to throw a tracer behind the golf ball so you guys can see it pretty clearly. So you're off those last couple ball tosses. Um, but this is where you're going to be able to see that, that smooth transition. Um, before I hit this shot, it's important to notice the second component of our tracking technology is also overhead. So we have our ion camera that is going to now see frame by frame through, through the golf swing. Club path, club face angle, club head speed. It's all coming from our ion in the ceiling. So you can see it here. Yeah, so I'm just going to point to it and make sure it transitions. All these lights up here uh, are in the ION 3. So there's a camera centered right in the middle, so we illuminate the hitting area and can see the impact. Now, when I, when I hit this shot, the combination of the ION 3 sees the club. The infrared sensors up by the screen are going to measure the ball flight. And so if I aim out a little bit to the right and hit a little bit of a draw with the tracer, you should see it. So again, right where the golf ball hits the screen is where it transitions into the virtual world. You see that nice little draw. And then after each and every shot, you're going to see a video replay of exactly what that club did through impact. On the side, uh, you're also going to see all of your data. So that data is going to compile on this driving range to where you're not only going to see your most recent shot, but you're going to see your average and your low, and it's going to and it's going to um, have that data for you on the right hand side. So all of your ball information, club path, club face angle, smash factor, spin, all that's going to be easily digestible off to the side. So again, just to demonstrate another shot, 
aim out to the left, try to hit the little fade, the outside in path. Now you have those both shapes. That little draw is going for the first time, the fade on this one. There's really no holes in the tracking technology. And so this is one of the reasons why the best players in the world, um, like Tiger, John Rung, Justin Rose, all those guys, have this technology in their homes is because of the detail of that tracking technology. So last one here on the driving range. Try to hit this somewhat straight. natural shot but relatively straight so again the tracking system is showing us exactly what I'd expect to see if I was playing outdoors so right now we're out on the driving range this is the same driving range you're going to see on the set of golf channel and we're really proud of that partnership um, another partnership we have is with the PGA Tour we're the official golf simulator of the PGA Tour uh, with that relationship we're creating all the, the new uh, cool courses uh, with our F full swing golf software. Uh, we have all the TPC courses, um, not all yet, but TPC Sawgrass. We have courses like Pebble. Um, we're working on other uh, great courses that are going to completely um, keep you fresh on your simulator going forward. So some of the cool features on the driving range currently, um, you can actually change your targets. You can move targets in and out to a selected distance, whether that's just a, a simple pull on the range, a green, or you can do a bucket. It's a nice visual to have out there. So all that capability uh, comes with the system as well. So now that we're done with that, I just want to go in and kind of give you an idea, um, more information about the shot by shot information that you're going to get from the ION 3. So again, what we touched on is the ION 3 is going to show you a frame by frame path or and show you impact each and every time. So one of the one of the cool things about it is, you know, once we see you know, it picks up and draws the phase, the path properly. Um, but I want to show what an extreme miss hit looks like. So I'm going to play this well off the toe. We'll see what the ion can see and show us. So even though that ball went pretty straight, let's see how the data compares to those other shots. So I just can stop this. And we can go back again frame by frame and see the effect of that extreme toe strike. So well out on the toe, it's, it's pretty square, which is why I hit a pretty straight shot, but there was no mass behind that shot. It was way off on the toe, and I pretty much can guarantee their smash factor is only 1.1. So you're not only going to be able to get the data to correlate to the shot that you hit, but you're going to have the visual imagery to correlate to that, that data. So really for entry level teaching and training, or even somebody just kind of digesting this data for the first time is going to be able to see you know, where, where they can improve on their, on their shots. Sure. Uh, one of our viewers wanted to know whether you were doing that through a touch screen or a mouse, just because it's off to the side. If you don't mind just uh, telling them all the things you can do from that touch screen that's included. Good question. Thanks, Ryan. Um, so yeah, we are off screen a little bit in what I'm doing, um, but with the solution with the all full swing golf simulators, it is we're going to have a 24 inch touchscreen controls that are going to be placed off to the side, you know, somewhere where they're not going to get hit, they're safe, uh, but they're very very user friendly. So I'm simply using a touch touchscreen interface to select icons similar to the face of an iPhone. You go to the icon for the certain application and navigate through the same way. Uh, very, very intuitive. So uh, typically when we install these in the commercial uh, environments, there's very minimal training uh, before people really start to get the feel of how this is operated. Um, so typically there's not much staff, additional staff that's going to be required. 
uh, and you can even you can even actually navigate this from a, a remote site uh, with our Bay Manager that's coming out shortly. So, so one thing I'd like to talk about right now is kind of the why why golf simulators, and I feel like you know one of the reasons you guys may be dialing in today is to discuss it, how is this going to improve my club, my course, um, and my my customers. So. What, what we've seen is a huge boom on the commercial side. And when I say commercial, I'm not only talking about golf courses, but I'm talking about hotels, casinos, restaurants, anywhere where there's an environment to um, attract people and complement a current food and beverage operation. So one of our partnerships that we're very proud of is with Topgolf. They actually use our technology to grow their brand on a little bit smaller scale than going out and getting a 10 acre plot of land. And what they've started with is uh, the Top Golf Swing Suites. So, so far they have approximately 200 of our simulators out in these heavy commercial use environments. And they clearly are focusing on the food and beverage and the entertainment side of things. Uh, the main reason they came after Full Swing and we ended up being their partner was the durability of our tracking technology. Now this is a commercial workhorse. I said a little bit earlier, there's no moving parts in the core tracking by the screen, so it never needs to be calibrated. So this is something that doesn't need very much hand holding um, or, or updates and upgrades and calibration over time. So once it's installed, it's relatively hands off and you can just run your operation. Now, Early on, this data that we're getting from these Top Golf uh, locations is that they're anticipating uh, around $35 per person per hour on the food and beverage spend alone in these environments. And just to show you what we're in, and this is this is what I would recommend a similar type of environment to create, is we're in our speakeasy here at our headquarters in Carlsbad, and we we created a really fun room here and we'll just pan around so you can kind of see it. We've got some whimsical wallpaper out to the side, but a cool seating area, a bar in the back. Um, and if I could just give you a sense of the size of this room, this is 16 feet wide and close to 30 feet deep. So the 30 feet gives you enough room for that bar in the back, seating, and clearly the physical space for the actual golf simulator and, and enough space for somebody to swing comfortably while you're in the system. Hey Joe, uh, one, of the, one of the questions we got earlier that I think you were kind of alluding to and just someone asked if you could repeat the, uh, the food and beverage stat about the $35 an hour. Yeah. Um, someone had asked us, what are the top three ways that simulators help drive uh, revenue at golf courses and commercial centers? whether that's fitting, sure. or food and beverage, and private event rental. Good question, and if you guys didn't hear that, Ryan was basically reporting a question, um, the top three ways that clubs are actually using the simulators to create revenue, and that, it, it does vary, whether it's a public course, whether it's a private environment, but ultimately, um, teaching and training, so lessons is a big component of, of how the technology is used. Um, food and beverage, again, having it in a bar and grill type environment where people are you know settling bets, ordering drinks, things like that. So it's a pretty loose um, side there. But seeing an uptick in um, you know, pro shop purchases as well through winter months or colder months, uh, it keeps people on property longer. So instead of finishing the 18th hole and throwing your clubs in the trunk and, and just moving on, you're 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 more incentivized to stick around and kind of enjoy enjoy the technology. Um, another great way is because we have multiple sports as well in games, uh, it becomes a very attractive event space. So that could be kids' birthday parties, it could be a compliment to a wedding um, banquet or party, uh, and really typically even for a space like we have here at our headquarters, people are paying sometimes thousands of dollars for just a few hours to rent the space out exclusively for their, their event. So. There's lots of ways people are doing it, and that's what's cool about this technology is 
relatively speaking, this is a pretty compact space to have so much to be able to do. So the golf simulator, uh, clearly we have 100 different golf courses, all famous PGA Tour quality courses. The capability of the tracking technology to give you an accurate um, ball flight, teaching capabilities, but the entertainment side from the sports, games, flipping this over to your home theater as well. Um, it creates a package that is far more than just a great golf simulator. So um, that's what we're seeing on the market is the growth on really wrapping everybody's arms around that and, and expanding. Um, we're, you know, we're proud to be the simulator that we just installed up at the Pe or, uh, Pebble Beach at their learning center. Uh, we have not only our Pro Series golf simulator, but our virtual green as well. Um, it, it, again, it gives them the, the tools to, to have the best experience for their, their students and just customers in general. Um, so, you know, this, this has been a lot of uh, high level um, a crash course basically on our technology. I can always uh, spend more time, our sales staff can spend more time with everybody individually. Uh, we do conceptual renderings. Uh, we do a lot of advising on what the best solution would be for the club based on um, space available, or you can help plan future spaces. So from there, I know I've kind of, again, thrown quite a bit out there. So maybe we can take a couple questions from the comments. So go ahead and keep firing those over to Ryan and uh, we'll start taking the next couple. Yeah, while, uh, while you're answering some questions, maybe a lot of you step off to the side here, Chad, if you don't mind zooming the camera that way, we'll get set up on a, on a course. We had some questions about seeing some real gameplay with short game and putting. Someone wants to know how to actually see putt. So if you don't mind, uh, we'll, if we can zoom in on Joe over there. We can answer some, uh, some other, other questions while, he's, while we're getting set up on course. We'll, uh, oh. we'll set you up on a, on a hole where you can just play start to finish. We have to do some short game work. Okay. Well, yeah, so just before we get in, we'll, we'll go ahead and set up the software. Um, a couple of things you're going to see when we get into talking short game. Uh, number one is when we're putting, there's going to be two different visuals that you can see on the green to help you with the topography and speed and break. Uh, so first and foremost, there's going to be a grid that we can lay over the green. You can select it to be on there, you know, leave it off, whatever, in terms of preferences. But that, that grid is going to show you the fall lines on the green. Uh, gives you a sense of speed as well with color changes on the grid. Uh, but also, there's going to be an ideal line. So it's similar to aim point or pup view, if you guys are familiar with that to give you that visual representation of if, if I hit this the proper speed and take that line, you're, you're going to be in good shape with, with the short game play. So the way the, way the tracking technology works um, is we're going to be measuring what that ball is doing into the virtual world with the infrared tracks by the screen. So as the ball rolls through those infrared tracks, it's going to measure the ball speed and line. The seamless transition again into the virtual world, and then you'll be able to um, go ahead and, and play all your pots. The data is going to be represented um, where it's going to tell you the distance, the elevation. So again, that's going to be another tool that you can use for for putting, chipping, and everything. So uh, we're going to do two things right now. We're, we're going to pull up the seventh hole of Pebble Beach. Uh, I'll hit a shot down, you can see kind of what the gameplay is like, and then once we get down to the green, I'll be able to show you the, the, the putting um, that we're, we're talking about here. We've got seven pebble here. I'm just going to go to the light to adjust as we go back. Got it. And thanks guys for being patient. I wish I wish we could be hanging out at the PGA show, but I think this is the, the next best thing. Um, here's the shot to seven. That was a gap wedge. It might be too much. So let's, you guys, I'm on the spot here. 
softer. Well, that was a little long, but let's let's work on chipping. I'm pretty sure I can hit the green from here. So, when I'm looking on the on the side, I have the the distance to the hole, the elevation to the hole, and if there is any wind, that's that's on there as well. So, just like when you're on the course, you want to use this visual into the virtual world as as like a window. Um, I'm in the out a little bit to the right, uh, approximately here on the green. That's where I want this, this ball to land. Uh, chunked it. <laughs> Everyone's making me nervous. One more chip. You see the rollout. Am I going? Down the hill. So inside six feet is a gimme. Um, so I was down to four, and I would have been giving it to myself. But we, we're going to do a ball again, and I'll hit it so we can make sure we have a longer putt. Get out to the side. Please don't get inside six feet. Okay, all right, seven feet. Don't ever despair. So from here, again, like what I was describing, you're going to have a, a grid that's on the green that's going to show you the general topography. Uh, little slopes, there's, there's these drip lines that are going to show the, where the water would fall, um, and also that ideal aim point. Now, when you're putting, you're not confined to hitting to a certain area on the hitting mat. I can actually move up, and since this is a much shorter putt, feels more natural to hit the seven footer from seven feet from the screen versus back where you're normally teeing it off. So go ahead and aim for that ideal aim point. There you go. So anywhere on the green is going to be similar. Um, you know, it's nice to be able to have that six foot gimme and not have to make a, a two foot virtual putt. So. The way that software operates is you're just going to be on to the next hall when you finish from there. So, good question. Um, thanks for adding that, Ryan. Yep. Uh, we're actually just want to let know in our last two minutes. So, if there's any other questions, this is a good time. Otherwise, okay. I can kind of give them a nice sign off. Okay. Well, yeah. If uh, there are any other questions, like Ryan said, if you couldn't hear, um, a couple minutes left on our time. I appreciate it. Uh, go ahead and fire something over. There is. Uh, what is the minimum distance needed from the screen to the edge of the hitting mat? Okay, um, I want a little clarification, but just in general, what you're looking at here is you have the screen, but you also have some dead space behind the screen. So, in there, there with the different size systems we have, there's definitely an average distance. So, from the wall behind the screen to where we're actually swinging a golf club is approximately 12 feet. It gets a little shorter, a little bit farther when you go from wide screen to a standard simulator, but that's a good rule of thumb. Now, so from the ball to the screen, you're probably closer to that 11 feet or uh, 10, 10 feet and change. So give you an idea uh, of the entire environment. Now, if you're constrained on space, uh, as a rule of thumb, you want 20 feet of total depth, and that would accommodate all of all of your golfers. Nobody's going to feel restricted on the depth aspect uh, from that position. If you have 20 feet, uh, you really start to get iffy in a commercial environment if you're under nine and shorter than 17 and a half feet of total depth. That's where you really start to have to think of who's swinging clubs, what type of swing do they have. Um, but ideally, you want 10 plus feet on height. You want at least 12 feet of width, and in general, 20 feet of depth. That's two to five seconds. Just say okay. But hey, guys, thanks for spending the time. I know that was a quick window. We, we threw out as much information as we can. If you have questions, you can always reach out to full, sales at fullswinggolf.com. 
and we'll get you hooked up with one of our sales reps who can help you out with uh, finer detail. All right, have a good one. Thank you.